He called him by that same thing. I got the email at 9.40 Friday. Joining us for the, for the meeting tonight? Okay. I thought it was six. No, I thought it was Okay, bye.
America to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Reform? Um. <coughs> participation? Article 1. Is there other business and adjustments to the agenda? Are there any uh, adjustments to the agenda? Gary? So there are no adjustments other than you have in your pack some extra information for your current packet. Uh, one is for the OSHA mandate, one is from uh, solar, and then one that starts with an email. And that goes with the tax commitment uh, stuff. You also have a uh, one thing which would be considered as a business that came in. It's a, it's a training for uh, for NIMS National Incident Management System that's coming up for officials. So I'll be on that. And if you wanted to have a, somebody you wanted to get in on that, uh, it's going to be a Zoom. It will be provided after registration is complete. And if you want to add that to the agenda, uh, that would be the one thing. Is there any discussion on adding that to the agenda? There's one. Just a virtual training? Yep. So that will become Article 10? Do we have consensus? 11. Huh? Well, the Article 11, yes. Okay. Yeah. So by consensus, we're going to add this article? Yes. Okay. <laughs> we want the Article 2 is to conserve the board meeting minutes on October 12 and 19. Both or just one? Both. 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 Oh, oh, yeah. a second. Is there any discussion? Are there any corrections or omissions in the minutes? Hearing okay. none. All those in favor of the motion? Those against? Motion carries. Article 3 is to consider treasurer's warrants. Those right on the table right there, they've all been signed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, motion to accept. Motion by Jason. Okay. Motion. I second. Okay. We have that. Okay. Motion by Doug, seconded by Jason to approve the uh, treasurer's warrants. Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? Against? Motion carries. Article 4 to conserve the amended and final solar supply contract proposal from Engie. Matter Walks for Solar, LLC, Novel Energy Solutions, and Nordic Solar Power, LLC. So I've given you what are the final offers, I guess. Um, I'll summarize those by saying that uh, right now you have two solar uh, entities or businesses that will be in Madawaska, one for sure, which is NG. They are already permitted. It's in David. They've already got the road in, installed, mm -hmm. and that one's coming online next summer. And then you have one proposed, one by Caribou Solar. Uh, if you subscribe with them, not necessarily would you tap into this. It would be somewhere as if they have multiple sites in Arista County. The <coughs> one that you'll see the most is right across from uh, Caribou Motor Inc., across the access highway. Yeah, right over right there. Mm -hmm. um, both of them have uh, amended their offers. Actually, NG has uh, offer has always been consistent that they wanted to pay uh, property taxes or fees in lieu of taxes. Uh, they are providing a ten thousand dollar donation to a nonprofit, which is a beautiful vision for me. So I've already made that pledge. Um, Caribou Solar came in. They're making a ten thousand dollar one time donation. Nonprofit of your choosing. Um, they also pledged to, to pay the town in lieu of taxes uh, $2,000 per megawatt hour, just like NG did. So remember, uh, Caribou Solar was here, yeah. Sean was here, and said yeah. they weren't going to, but they mm -hmm. changed their mind. Okay. And then you have Novel, which is in Frenchville, so they obviously won't be paying tax. They're giving you an, an amended proposal with the Rex. Built in, yeah. uh, but obviously they can't offer payment in lieu of 
that's the genomic intensity and not less than that. So uh, that's the 30,000 foot view of, uh, of the proposals. You guys can, you've had a chance to look through them and then there's a place to talk about it. Okay. 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 So I, I did take a look at, at all of them and um, I kind of made my own chart to, I guess, to put all the, I guess, the, the birds and you know, everything together to figure out what one has, what the other one has. And they're all pretty much close together. They're all pretty much on par. They all pretty much offer the same thing. But I got a lot more comfortable feeling from the, the Caribou Solar Project about how strict the contract was and kind of how much motion we had within that contract. And I just feel a little bit more comfortable with a large contract like that, with kind of how they approached it and how, how their contract was, was written. So that's just a personal uh, I, I will add, uh, as, as information that I gathered from the information too, that right now, uh, Caribou Solar, they have met with the planning board because right. the property that they bought is on the end on street medium high density, uh, medium density residential, so not technically a permittable use of that land, solar, mm -hmm. under the, under the, and so I think the planning board has met with them once for like a pre-meeting, kind of talk about it, and they're going to continue that discussion. Um, I think Caribou Solar indicated that if they're unable to build one there, they're going to build one somewhere in that west of but I'm just, I just want you to know that right now, in order, for it, my interpretation is that if, in order for them to build uh, on what is a lot behind Paramount, more or less, on off of Dion, uh, it's land formerly owned by Bill Wolf, the Mudgee Ozarks LLC, I believe. Um, Medium density residential, but it's wooded, and it's not far from the town line. And whether or not they can make an exception, there's nothing in the land use code that allows for an exception there in that regard. Um, and to modify the medium density residential zone to offer solar would mean that you would open it up to a lot of places in town. Um, the, I think the discussion there, the possibility there, would be to rezone that area. Potentially, I think that would be the most prudent, reasonable, in my opinion. The most reasonable thing to do there. It's another discussion, but just know that you know this proposal with by Caribou Solar is based on either them being there or somewhere else. Right, because they, they did say that even if they don't build one in Madawaska, they build one somewhere else that we could be on that next whatever next project they build we can be on. Right. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a Madawaska project. It'd be great. You know, but if they don't build here, they're not paying. They're not, they're not paying. Paying to the pilot right. right. No, and I understand that. But either way, like the other company, Novell, they're they're building their plant, whether we join in with them or not. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I, I don't want us to base our, our our sole idea on just you know what, where, or when, or how, but mm -hmm. the fact that what's the best cost effective for the for the community, and also what's the most comfortable contract. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're signing a contract that's going to extend past the life of some of the people here on the board, so we want to make sure we make it easy for. I don't know. I, th I was thinking we were looking at the five years, so right, which yeah. is again still past the life of some of the people on the board. So I want to make sure any decision that I make today, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not yeah, sticking yeah. somebody with a, a bad decision. You know? yeah. was, why did they pick that location? Why was that location a thought to them? I mean, I don't, I don't know what it. I just thought that be. I don't, I don't know. Is it because they would be an assumption on that one? Yeah. My question is available land, direction of sun, you know. proximity of the, the power, right? Yeah. Connect. Yeah. But I mean, regardless, I still feel quite strongly about, and I'd like to hear the opinion of the other. To see what. Well, for sure, I like the idea that uh, that uh, Andy's project has already started. They're already committed to being here. They're already committing themselves to. Um, the taxes, they're already uh, going to give us uh, some money down. So it's its a consideration that, that bears strongly with me. I have to agree. I can tell you when we first met, I was really trying to lean towards the Caribou project. Um, and then when we met that second time with them, and we got some more explanation, more information. I went kind of back where the end was, and I just feel like the Caribou project, although I have no 
informed that there would be a viable project. I just think we would be accepting something that's going to be an extended period before we ever see anything actually put into <coughs> use for them. That project hasn't even begun. So the other one's already going. We know we're going to be, or the proposal is going to be online by next, late next fall, yeah. right? And they're offering the pot, they're offering the 10,000 front, they're offering, you know, I just feel like it, they have more meat behind them. I don't know. I, I'm leaning towards the energy myself at this point. That's where I, I'm comfortable with it. Public energy also, because I thought they had the resources, so if something happens to that, they can be back up and running again. They're a big company, and they, they, they've had this in other places around the world. So I thought if there's a, a storm that comes on, damages, you know, they don't have to wait for an insurance settlement. They can start rebuilding back online. I know they committed to use the whole contract as wherever possible. And they are right now. That's yeah, right. They are right now. Mm -hmm. So to me, I, you know, I'm about to say that. And I'm not saying that the other one wouldn't, but I just feel like in place we know it's happening. One of the partners is a contractor. And Gary. <laughs> so. I, I, I think any of these companies, I think any of these companies are, are good offers. And I think uh, Anolo, not needing the taxpayers' community, the others are offering to pay taxes. Even even if even if they, you know, even if uh, Caribou Solar and NG weren't offering the taxes, we still get the benefit of the, the reimbursement, the partial, the fifty percent reimbursement right. from the state of Maine under that program. Right. We're not going to realize that from Anolo because they're building friends. And I think they're a good company. You know, they'll, they'll be good for their. There's an added benefit on the other two that we wouldn't get with them. It's as simple yeah. as that. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I feel the same way. I think novel can be put as that idea. That's my opinion. I know. I, well, the first time the presentation was made, I was impressed by the presentation. I thought they were organized. They knew what they were talking about. Caribou had started, and I, they didn't show up for the first presentation, so they kind of lost the book. The yeah. And to their credit, though, I, I will say to their credit, I think they, they were just coming on. Around the time that we had already started, we had yeah. been into the discussion for a while. And but I just thought they weren't organized, and to me, they need to be organized, and they need to look like they're solid, and they're selling their stuff. And that sales pitch didn't fly for me, but that was terrible for me. But NG, I found was really. Grounded. But he was the first one to bring out the energy credits. So. He was. He did flush out some. He was the first one to say, oh, what about these energy credits? And everybody else seemed to be silent on it. <laughs> so I like the openness that they had. That, that was a plus. So. I mean, they're local on top of that, too. You know, it's, yeah. uh, it, that's, a, it's a that's a consideration. Yeah, no question. Those are the two at this point that I'm considering. Yeah. I mean, they're offering the same, but 10, 20 percent. Have we figured out what we were looking at for the mini? 85 percent this time? Yeah. I didn't over, I, I based on our 85 yeah. percent subscription, so we didn't over commit. Right. Better to leave a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Agree on motion? <laughs> I can't I'm not ready yet. <laughs> Jason, are you? I talk to us. I mean, I'm I'm pretty committed to, to the terrible one in the sense that again, it is local. Uh, you know, you mentioned something about well, they're not gonna have to wait till insurance claims go go right away. When it comes to projects like these, it, it's kind of self reliant on itself. If something happens to the solar panels. They're not just going to pump money out of their own pocket to fix it. The money that they use to fix it is coming out of the money that they're the credits that they're going to be giving us. So we're we're the ones who are paying for that repair, you know, whatever's not covered in that. I feel having the terrible one where they're local, they're closer. Uh, it feels a lot closer to home than this huge company overseas that to us is just another number on their chart, you know. And I've seen that before with, with businesses where out of you know out of sight, out of mind type of thing. And and I get that mentality where. Caribou one, yeah, he might have seemed like he wasn't as prepared, but I feel that they're they're closer to home. You know what I mean? They have more of a heart in it, and it felt like 
there, there was a lot of more openness coming from, from that. You know, I just feel a lot more comfortable with a local company like that. And, you know, and, and I'm putting aside the fact that you know they're who's paying taxes and how much because they're all doing the same thing. And regardless of who we choose, those projects are coming in, or at least they're attempting to come in. Regardless of who we choose, right. even if we choose the one that's in Frenchville, the other two companies are still coming in out of Washington. Totally agree with the fact that they're off my list as well, just for, for a lot of the reasons. But so I'm basing my decision less on what they're offering because those are just extra. I'm I'm looking at more what's you know what I feel is best for the community and, and where I think we'll get better support and better uh, response from. Better support, do you think? I, I definitely think so because they're closer here. They're closer to the contractors. You know what I mean? This other company, yeah, they're using local contractors, but they're kind of disconnected from from us up here. You know, at least the major shareholders would be going to care would see them. Well, they, they are though, but, but but all of these companies are going to have multiple. Sites oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, and I, I, I believe NG already deals with some portion of them. I don't think they have their own sites. They manage something somewhere. And yeah, I mean, they about. have other sites that are developing. Right, right. there's other ones coming right online, so. My only hesitation with the caribou one at this point is the simple fact that we don't know when it would be online. Ultimately, I know that that's an issue up there. And whether that drags us up another year or two years, we're looking at accepting or saying we'll, we'll take on to this contract and to realize the savings in five years from now. Yeah. When yeah. things could be a lot different from they are today. Sure. But, but, but they did say they wouldn't necessarily have to subscribe to this farm. Right. We could get subscribed to the one. So we get the energy credits and all that, but we probably would not get the taxes. Correct. You know, that may be a year or two down the road. Yeah. Right. yeah. If at all. If. Yeah. Well, he seems committed. To, uh, I think they're committed to it. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, he seemed very honest and open. He, he did. He did give us information yeah. that the others. Yeah, that they were hiding behind. It seemed like the risk that he came on. He was very open. And, yeah, and, and you can tell just by looking at some of the gestures, I mean, you can tell a lot by how some of these gestures and how they speak. And with the other company, it's like you ask one of them a question, they kind of eye themselves to the other person, like, okay, well, you answer well with him. You, I mean, right away it came out, and here it is. You, you do with it what you want. But here, here's the information. I felt a lot more comfortable talking with him than, than this other company. You know, just personal feeling. Well, just based on, 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 Probably the size of these companies. I mean, you could tell that that they needed two or three people to answer different portions or different questions that were right. being asked. Where he answered all of them. Well, he yeah, the whole project. You know, yeah. um, I, I do agree that he did. He quickly would pick up and respond to a question, even whether it was directed at him or not at that time. And the times that he would answer that, you know, pretty openly and well and fairly. Yeah, but but at the same time, like the novel Connor was here. He was the last to speak and kind of joked about it. He was like, well, yeah. All, <laughs> they did all work. He did all the answering of the questions because yeah. he was the first in line. Yeah, and, yeah, true story. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if Novel was right here in, in the middle of Madawaska with the others, I mean, he, he did a pretty good presentation too. And he was, I mean, I have the same feeling with him too. It's like one on one. But yeah. kind of, you know, I want to try to stay local as much as I can. Mm -hmm. If I can go with, with somebody who's planning on coming to Madawaska, whether they make it here or not, their plan is to come here, you know. Is there a question at all, at all of, of the sustainability? I mean, some of these companies here are pretty, pretty, pretty widespread already. Where this company that we're considering here is fairly new. It, it is, but if you look at it in, in a sense of, of this, if you've got this huge company, we've got farms all over the place, and, and they're making, they're, you know, they're going to set up a farm, they're going to milk it for what it's worth, and then once it's done, and, and we've, we've seen this before. I mean, if you look it up on the internet. You where farms have just been left there and, and that's it. Okay. Well, if you have a smaller company like Caribou who's more dedicated and, and, and seems more personable, they're going to try to reuse that equipment. They're going to extend the life of that equipment because to them, they're a much smaller company and that equipment means a lot more to them than a big company who's just got a site out in the corner. I Plus, did ask them directly about decommissioning when it was done the yeah. first meeting we had. And they have a decommissioning plan that they use. And they've always tried to get it to go back online, sell it to somebody else. And if not, they decommission and place it back to its original state. And everything's gone, minus drain pile or anything they did underground. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I 
I did ask that question because that was one of my yeah. first concerns was, okay, in 20 years, you're just going to pack up and shut it down and leave a bunch of solar oh, right. power panels laying around here? Like, what's going to happen with that? Um, but they're on a lease land, so, you know. Uh, Engie. Engie, yeah. 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 That's why I was curious. Oh, Caribou was looking at buying, right? Caribou was looking at buying. So, yeah. Ultimately, I find them very... Yeah. They, they oh, really yeah. are. Yeah. And my only hesitation on the caribou is when are they going to be online? You know, if we agree to this today and they run into some hiccups, where else are they going to go? And then if there's any issues finding an alternate location or that alternate station isn't in, in Madawasco. And now we have NG sitting over here that offered, you know, the same package and was able to commit right away. And maybe we lose out on the, uh, the pilot. In the lieu of the taxes, but it's that's so the only draw mm -hmm. is yeah, right it's there. Hard. It's viable, right? Did yeah. they say that if we don't them. choose them, they're not going to pay taxes, or they're paying taxes regardless? Who, NG? Yeah, they're paying taxes. Regardless. Okay, so they're paying taxes. So either way, now I mean, if we say let's just throw it out there and say we're going to choose caribou, we're going to put a stipulation on it. If they're not up and running within two years, I'm just throwing a number out there. Then we, we, you know, we avoid the contract. We can put that in there. Uh, right. But we won't realize any, any benefits by not getting and the well, so, right. And I understand. And then at that point, we, we will, but I mean, they're, they're they're trying, and they he said it himself. If that farm doesn't doesn't happen, they've got other farms that are coming online as well. So yeah. I don't foresee us being two years without seeing that. Right? Yeah. You know, a local company too. I mean, most of the folks that probably own this company have that other interests in the area, and you know very well that any issues that we're facing, they would, they would, they would be right here right. to help us. You know, it's it's different when it's they, local. They hear they hear our bark a lot louder than you uh, bet. You know, I, I I think the more and more we're talking about this, the more and more I'm thinking because I really was looking at, at staying with Andrew here, but but I think. Uh, Discussion here tonight. I think I'm going to change my mind. The other benefit to the Caribou project is you're correct that all those involved in that project, the investors in that project, all own viable businesses. Yeah. So any tarnish to their name would, perfect, would serve them. And they put ties on. into this community yeah. in different ways. Not that I would suspect that there would be something, but if something were to happen. And I kind of get the feeling already that if something were to happen, maybe you're right there. Probably. Right? You know what I mean? I get I get that feeling from that. And it's not to say that the other company won't do the same. I mean, I can't, you know, I mean, I, I don't know enough history about this other company to say that's what right. they've been doing in the past. So don't get me wrong. Like, you know, the other company could be just as good, just as reliable, just as quick as responding. So. <clears throat> what are your thoughts, Gary, on? I think it'll be a way. I like, you know, Angie was always, uh, Right out of the gate, had the best offer. Yeah. Right. And um, the longer commitment, though. The longer commitment, right? They were willing to get off of that. Um, Caribou Solar. They weren't going to pay property taxes. He said it right here because we were exempt. Right. You know, and I think that, you know, they figured out that there were other. Their competitors were throwing other things into the mix. Yeah. You know, and that that. Without actually telling each one, well, this one's giving us this, and we didn't go down that road. We forced um, our hand. We, 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 <laughs> we worked with them yeah. to make sure they put their best sport offer forward, forward. Uh, and they've all stepped up and gave us a better offer. You know, yeah. and so you have what are basically, I think, very similar similar offers, and and uh, your decision is going to hinge on, you know. Local, local versus yeah. international, yeah. and and who's going to provide the best the best service? Um, can you hear one also? A, I don't think you can go wrong with either. It's a five it. year with an automatic renewal, correct? On the caribou. Yeah, we have to let them know yeah. when they're going to opt out. And 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 they have to find a subscriber to replace to replace to replace us. Replace us. But that could delay things too. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I mean, I'll make a motion if we're ready for a motion. I mean, I'll make a motion to uh, propose the going with the Caribou Solar Project. It's a five-year contract as written by the contract that had been reviewed by the board. I'll second that. <clears throat> yeah, we have a motion, we have a second. Are there any conditions to this motion? I think the only condition, and that's what we can discuss our discussion part of the, what do you think about that early termination where they don't get a project online for us? I, would, I don't know if we want to necessarily say if they don't get the Madawaska project, but if they don't get us on a project by, I don't know, two years, a year and a half, what do you mean? I hate to withdraw off it in, in, in the fact that we may lose out on the any other opportunity that may not ever come up looking the same at that point. Right. If this goes a year and a half, two years before they're online, and we have to sign, you know, we agree that in two years, if it's not online, it's two years and a month, or even if it's three years, I don't know. I feel like we're going to give up something that we have on the plate right now. So I would hate to void the contract over inability to, to put it online. I, I, I would just say that I know the, the motion is out there, but. This is for your consideration. No, I didn't add that to the motion. Right. right. So, I mean, but this is for your this is for your consideration as you're thinking about this and that you know the new taxes. Right. And that means that they're both in town. But you want to make sure that your offer your is conditional upon them actually being here in town because if they're not a taxpayer in town, then does that change your mind? Not necessarily, and I and I'll explain why. Because regardless of who we choose. Okay. These two companies are trying to come in, and, and this other project doesn't. Sorry, not NDP, yeah, and, and this other project doesn't work out. Then we still lose that taxpayer, regardless of who we chose. So what do you mean? No, uh, it didn't work out. The Madawaska site didn't work out. For like I'm saying, if we go to, if we decide tonight, we go with Engie. That's yeah. our choice. And the Caribou Solar doesn't get their project in Madawaska. Well, regardless of who we chose, we still lose those taxes coming in. You know what I mean? They're, they both pledge to pay taxes if they come into the town. Well, Angie's already, already, already here. Already here. Yeah. I understand that. What I'm just saying is, regardless of who we choose, both companies are, are going to pay taxes. Yeah. In town. Well, yeah. and my yeah, understanding that, is, Angie would start paying next year. Right, yeah. right. And what I'm saying is, you want to make sure that Caribou Solar is going to build because right. they're hedging, they're putting their best offer forward that they're going to pay those fees. They right. stop being but if they don't build, but they subscribe us to their farm in Caribou. And they ultimately decide that they can't build in that Alaska. Right. Then that, I completely understand then, that. Then all of a sudden you don't have the same offer anymore. I, I completely understand that. But what I'm trying to say is at the end of the day, mm -hmm. our decision between the two of them mm -hmm. does not cause the, ta uh, the town to lose any tax revenue because if we would have chosen NG and they and that other caribou project fails, we lose that tax income anyway. You know what I'm saying? Our choice of who to choose from is not gonna choose who pays taxes. Mm -hmm. That's that's yeah, I get it. That's separate. I understand. You know what I mean? From from an, I, if you're looking at it from an accounting standpoint. I'm looking at it from an accounting standpoint. I'm looking at what's best for the town. You know, I do understand it, it's better to choose somebody who's paying sure. taxes at the town, right. but at the same time, you know, we want we need to choose who we feel more comfortable. With, you know. Okay. Motion. Right now, there's no. Maybe instead of we sit for a hard cut and say, with the ability to review in two years. Well, no, we can have it before we sign that contract. They commit that they were built in Madawaska. Yeah. And that's, but, but, and I don't want to muddy up the waters here, but, you know, they have a, a site that, that, they have a site that's got some, real issues. some work. Correct. That, that's what's Some legal work sorry. that they need sorry. to accomplish in the town as well. I mean, if, if we decide, they're saying that's where we want it, and that's the only place we're going to put it. So I'd say that's what they're going to say, but let's just for the sake of discussion, if that would be the position, then, then it puts this board in that situation where you got to either convince the planning board to, to move forward and, and to say, okay, oh, it's rezoning the right thing for that lot. That's a carve out that's zoned commercial. But that, everything around it is medium density residential. So at some point in time, either yeah. it was developed that way or it was carved out for a specific yeah. purpose, right? Yeah. I can see that happening, but the planning board's going to have to be on board, and so are the voters.
members of the town. It's an ordinance. Yeah, zoning. Yeah. 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 And like I said, if it doesn't work out, that will put us on a different project. So we're not losing out on right. that completely. Yeah. You know? I just I just don't want to take that initiative where we're going to rush into somebody who's ready now. We're going to rush into this just because they're there now rather than wait for something that I feel is, is, is a better structure. You know what I mean? That's, you know. Well, it's like, it's like I mean, these these companies have to sell this farm prior to them getting it online. Getting it online, and so you know the consideration there is also how strong are they being able to sell their power? You know, are they able to to, to may really make this project go forward? You know, where where some of the other companies are considering are already there. You know, they're, they're already uh, their farms are already full. I mean, the win win. I'm so comfortable with the motion. Okay. Any more discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? Those against? Motion carries. Yeah, there. Good job. I thought that was going to take a while longer. We all did our homework. Yeah, you know what? So, we can try to. I mean, there's still still on that. Yeah. Article 5 is considered a phone line contract proposal and consolidated communications. This is just uh, for our remaining fax lines. Here we'll work with uh, the gentleman that, that consolidated. After we went through the exercise of eliminating a bunch of fax lines and we moved everything over to, uh, to internet base, uh, we still had some fax lines that needed to stay hardwired. Um, in that, Carol negotiated the rates with, and that's the agreement. What's the estimated savings? Uh, some of those, what you have in front of you, it's going to cut it by 50%. 50% savings? On, on what you're, not monthly there, but it, what we're looking at to cut, it's going to save by 50%. We're just looking to bring down that monthly rate. Okay. And this is the contract for how long? Um, uh, three or five years. I think it's three years. I thought it was three. Yeah, it's so, a three-year period. So the consideration here is for actually 11 of them? Is that it? We have 11 back lines? Uh, we have line. 11 lines, regular lines. We got rid of most of these back lines except for... But I mean, this, what we're looking at tonight, what are we looking what's, what's the actual quantity of lines that we're looking for? The different departments, the, the safety complex, fire department, the public works, three. everywhere. There's three. 11 lines, yep. Well, so if, it goes, what, if it goes from 11 to 3. Go pay attention to the last, to the last page here with the actual signature. They have a wrong location. Okay. Yeah, but it's, you know, I can, I don't think we're on the board, uh, but, you know, the finance committee and no, I the board had yeah. previous years to <coughs> look hard at how much we were spending on the money and stuff and tax and, uh, and uh, the issues came along with. Do we really need tax lines? Yes. One of these is for, uh, for the PD. It has to be a hard line. All right. And the other one is, uh, I'm trying to remember. I think it's for our copier here. We couldn't get rid of the fax line because of the copier because we scan and get e faxes no. coming, right? No. No. And the copier here is on the uh, internet based one. What about public works? Big safe, yeah. Uh, no. I think the sewer, the. Uh, oh, the sewer. The sewer. Uh, uh, the yeah. sewer. Yeah. yeah. That's what it is. The digital scanning system, it has to be a uh, fax line. Yeah. Well, we call it a fax line. It's a, it's a phone line. Yeah. Okay. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? Those against? Motion carries. Article 6 to consider down 2021 tax commitment. Okay, so you have additional information that I provided. Uh, the first is an email confirming with the assessing uh, office that 
work is done, complete. Um, second is if part of that would be variable rates. Of other fuel rates of other towns. Which I don't have in front of me at first. I'll look at next. Okay. And then you have uh, also last year's audit, not this year's audit, not June 2021, June 2020, June 2021 is still being worked on. Uh, so we took our intermediate fund balance from last year, and we came up with what we think is a, an estimate of our intermediate fund balance, that's an audited figure right now, uh, of $214,000 roughly. Our fund balance policy of 90 days cash, which is about $2.7 million. So, you know, that pays the bills for uh, the town and the school, you know, what we have to pay the school, uh, our local share. So that gives you an idea of where we are. Uh, you have my, my what I sent to you um, via email. Via email. Um, <coughs> the different scenarios. For you have those scenarios? You can yeah. pull up on the screen for us to kind of look at all yeah. the top. Okay. I know I did see the email, but I just. Right, you know what I didn't do? I didn't print those out. They weren't part of the original agenda. I emailed them out separately, so let me pull those up for you. So, a couple of things. Um, Carol kind of gave you a, a detail of how the homestead exemption is affected by the no rate on the, on the homeowner side. That is this pack that you have, most recent stuff, I believe. Yes. Um, I showed you what the effect on the mill rate is for the overlay, the Betty, and the homestead reimbursement. Okay. Uh, in my email, discusses to you uh, what I feel is important. Uh, number one, if you're, while you're considering choosing the mill rate, uh, you want to be mindful of that the overlay is the primary mechanism for growing our indesignated fund, getting to our target balance. We want to be mindful that we started uh, last year with the emergency reserve. So now we would hit a hit on the mill. For instance, the mill in their assessment, we would have disaster on our hands. Uh, we want to grow that emergency reserve so we can mitigate a, a financial blow to the town over some time, a year or two. Um, kind of, I'll talk about that a little bit. Um, you know, Doug, had, Doug asked me, what would be the number? What would be the amount of money? That would be ideal to help us in that emergency. I said, well, they do pay roughly 40% of our taxes, right? They, uh, most of our revenue comes from the mill, 40% of it. Um, or they are our single, our largest taxpayer, let me rephrase. Uh, we also generate a lot of betting uh, revenue, or it's somewhere in the vicinity of $8 million this year, not just associated with the mill, but a lot of that is associated with them. So what would be a good number to have in our emergency reserve? Well, you know, considering, you know, we, we have a $6 million budget, roughly, 6.1, 6.2, and the school's local share is, you know, um, we have that right here somewhere here. Is about um, 3.7 million. Yeah, I get it. Um, it's a big number, I think, that we should work towards. And this, 
statute that allows us to create that emergency reserve only allows us to put 5% of our budget, our budget, per year. Whether we raise it in taxes or we take it from the undesignated fund and just transfer it, we can only do 5% at a time. So I think we did 300,000 last year, we could have done 330 or 320 or something like that, but we just put it in need it. It would take us 10 years, according to the statute, to get the $3 million. So if we're gonna do that every year, you know, that's the goal, and, and the circumstances are such that we can do that, right? Uh, without causing too much hardship on the, on the taxpayers. Um, it would take us a while to get there, uh, but the primary way for us to be able to fund that would be through the overlay. That's where we we can grow the we can grow the undesignated fund three ways. We can bring in more revenue than we budgeted. We can not spend all of our budgeted uh, all of our budget in the respective departments. Or we have the overlay. The overlay is there for uh, Different reasons. It's there for errors in the tax commitment. If there's something that was missed or something that was wrong and it was significant, we could go back on that overlay. That's the cushion. You know, and that main revenue services allows that. Um, so I'm always, you know, main revenue services always advocates for, for a healthy overlay every year. Mm -hmm. Give yourself some cushion uh, that you're not on P's and needles. Uh, and then, you know, if, if I with luck, if there are no issues there, that money goes into the into the rainy day fund. You know, um, it goes out into the fund not only for the purpose of the emergency reserve, but if ever we grow it enough, we want to make some significant purchases of equipment, we can do so without borrowing. We would have that ability, and it allows us to cash flow better, and we don't have to do uh, tax increment financing on hands. Uh, on occasion, we've never done any. We never have to do any since I've been here. But the town has done those in the past. Yeah. So that's you know sort of where I'm at um, in that regard. Um, you know, I'm okay with anything in this range that I've highlighted to you. But right now, mm -hmm. the mill rate, the uh, main revenue services calculator, tells us that we can have a maximum rate of 22.30. We are currently at 22.85. And the minimum rate would be 2124, which would give us no overlay. It would actually be negative by $260. Uh, I think that anything in the highlighted range uh, serves us well. I was actually, I was kind of looking at, and I did some research on what we did last year as well, and I was kind of looking at the, the, the 105, the one just below your range, um, as a potential candidate for it. It kind of gives us. It's not much off from the from the point ninety five, but at least gets them to, to that, that threshold of one. Um, it still leaves a pretty decent overlay as well. Plus, with what's in the underneath the fund, we can still we can still fund that other account quite easily. It doesn't hurt us too much. But. What, the one thing that I always try to, to emphasize is that when you look at the tax commitment, is this is like one year's Correct. one year in time, right? Yeah. But it's not. It is. In that regard, but what the one thing that you got to be mindful of is whatever you choose for your overlay is, is your cushion for your next year's tax commitment. And, and if you hit a snag, um, that you know the next year, um, you can always have that overlay to fall back on to reduce taxes the following year. So, um, yeah, and, and you're looking at a thirty thousand dollar difference. And the one yeah. it's not a, you know, I, I did think of that as well. And one of the big things last year, everybody wanted us to reduce taxes as much as possible. We all know we can't, we can't do that. Uh, and I think that's kind of a, it's less than the bill of ground of, of the, the chart. It's a little bit below, but I think it's a comfortable number that we still survive with. You know, uh, Gary, I mean, revenue sharing is coming fairly strong again this year, so so our balance sheet should should look like we can we so can, we can uh, handle uh, look at the cost do the costs are coming in higher than uh, most you well I I, I, I want to caution you that yes the revenue sharing is, is up and it's gonna go up the reimbursement rate is gonna go up again and I foresee that revenue sharing will be strong. Uh, we in the last year we took in I 
$113,000 more than budgeted revenue share. Like state receipts were that high, right? So, you know, I, I'm thinking this year probably going to happen the same, but costs are going up, and we got to be mindful of that. How 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 we did increase some of those line items? Just for the fuel on that. Yeah, but, but I think yeah. that. We got the lines are, are supply costs yeah. are going up, and I think that you know one thing that we're gonna have a, I mean, I'll, I'll be, mm -hmm. I'll be straightforward with you when, when we look at salaries this year. Yep. Um, what other towns are putting out there for for cost of living alone, because of the CPI, which is around five percent. The consumer mm -hmm. price index is cool. It's six. It's almost five percent mm -hmm. this year, and so. <laughs> And that, that's just COLA, that's cost of living. Um, with what's going on with the labor market and our staff, we're, we're gonna have some conversations about where we are with, with, with our labor and what we're paying our labor. Um, and we'll have to have some discussions and see where that flushes out. I say that, just kind of teeing it up as you're getting ready to do this, that the lower you go down here on, on that mill rate range, the harder it's going to be next year to maintain. To yeah. maintain. And so, getting in the middle of this, and I'm not, I don't, I'm not 2180. I'm not. I'm, that's okay for me too. I'm just saying that. Yeah, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go any lower than that for sure. I, I have a hard. You know, that is that's my email to you would say. You know, from a taxpayer's perspective, that's taking the the, the win. I'm going to take that win right now, and I'm going to provide the biggest uh, no rate decrease. But I can guarantee you next year you're going to pay for that because we're not going to be able to sustain it and we're going to go back up. I try to look at the big picture and I try to think about, and, you know, I've been fortunate enough to be on the, on the finance committee for the past couple of years. So I've been able to see what we're doing and how that's playing out. And for me, and I look at just this year alone, let's look at some of the bigger projects we've been able to do, um, whether it's the fire truck. Police car, ambulance, power truck, all these different things. We've been able to put some money away. We start building your reserve accounts, those sorts of things. If something happens, COVID's not going anywhere. We're clearly back in the match where we were not for the past eight months. This year we made all right. I don't know what next year is going to bring. So I think we're, the more we go down that chart, the bigger risk we're going to take on the back side of that. And I've always said, said that rather than take them in bigger chunks, take smaller bites and bring it down. If you were to pull this chart up next year and we were looking at the same thing, then you could potentially drop it another piece down. I find the comfortable rate for me to be at the three quarter mil decrease at the 2210. That's where I think it makes the most logical sense to maintain without dropping too far and having a risk that you have to increase or have very no, potentially no change or an increase next year. That plow truck that we agreed upon, we had a price that they could not set in stone. Who knows what that's coming next year? So there's a lot of projects that we know we have. Look what we've done this year. We had to turn around. We had unexpected expenses with pumps for the sewer, sewer plant. All those things take into consideration where we went to find that money. It's not like we have tons of money sitting on the side where if you come into a problem, well, we'll just go over there and get it. We're taking away everything you just worked two years to get. So the only way to keep that in line is to be reasonable. Everybody wants a tax reduction. I totally understand that. I would be nothing more happy to drop it down to 21, 24. But it's not a feasible, it's not a responsible way to do it. I mean, we can talk about where we are, comparatively speaking, with, with the other towns. In looking at that, look at the services we offer. You know, we reduced taxes last year, right? We had, you guys have done that we went last down year. A little bit, yeah. You know, and I'd rather see a trend when we go down all the time. A little bit at a time. Bring it down too much in the year after I bring it up, that is uproar. <laughs> That's where you get in trouble. I completely understand that. Like, you know, yeah, of course. I mean, that just shows that you know, I'm we're not really looking at the whole picture. Right? Yeah. I, I think a quarter, the, the 7.75 is, is not an odd. You, you need the middle of a 0.85 or something a little bit higher up just to give a bigger tax break. I mean, a lot of these people, especially with COVID, are having a hard time affording things right now. Prices of everything has gone up and hurt them greatly. If we can give a little bit more of a tax break this year just to help out 
And I'll, I'll that's where I struggle with this year because if that same thing occurs next year and things don't go down, it's only going to get worse and we're going to have to right raise the tax rate again. Well, I mean, I, I can understand what you're saying, but we're not going for 21 24. We're going for, you know, you know, order of a million. Yeah. I will, I will say that long term, speaking long term and about the different ways that you can achieve the uh, relief, tax relief. You know, no reductions, but the homesteads, um, those are going to continue to go down because yeah, correct. I expect next year that we'll be at 100% or, or less. And based on what happened in, in, the, in the real estate market, uh, we're going to see towns falling, their, their uh, certified ratio falling precipitously, I think. Yeah. Uh, we see it coming. And what that means is that the state reimbursement for uh, Homestead exemption, the state statute is twenty-five thousand. It's multiplied by a certified ratio, so we're actually be able to give a bigger reimbursement right now to the a reduction to the homesteaders uh, than the state statute of twenty-five thousand. But the, the the opposite of that is when we fall below one hundred, we'll, it'll be reduced by that. And so, like if you look, uh, if you look at Frenchville, the twenty-five thousand. Homestead exemption is, is multiplied by 88%, yep. and that's what they're getting over there. So, I think next year's homesteads are going to go down. The veterans' exemptions are going to go down. And it's not because of anything that you have any control over. Uh, it's just, you know, what's going on in the market. So, that will be a, a negative on us next year as well um, to achieve some relief there. Um, so, you can take more on the front end, or you can save some for the back end. I guess is the way to look at it. I, I guess for me, I try to put, I, I try to think about the unknown. What if, if the unknown comes up? And you'll never know. You're right. We don't know whether they're coming or not. But at the end of the day, I think we're poised in a position right now where you. We may be able to stabilize ourselves over the next year. We have the, the paving project that's going on that's going to help take that burden off. We're not, we shouldn't see, you know, given anything that we don't know right now, we shouldn't see some major problem with roads. Um, all the sewer, right, all the lines of the sewers have, have been upgraded, correct? We just we just approved the last bit of that to be done over behind the end of Acadia. Mm -hmm. So those bigger projects are behind us. So right now is a chance to solidify where we're at maintain that and then work on it again but i think it's too soon to drop too far off that's my only thing. i don't want to you know i don't want to do this you're all right time. yeah and i, I think just, we're, i think we're right here and we're in a position to be able to kind of afford to do a little more this year you know there were years that we, we, we wouldn't even have this choice right you know so i mean uh, for sure, my thought was to try to get this overlay as close to 300,000 as possible, and that that puts us in the in, in uh, at 295. You're looking at what a 22. 22. That that was that's what I was aiming for all, all, all along here. Yeah. I said I had 22, 22, 10. Yeah. <laughs> so it would be a 285. Yeah. I'll, I mean, I'll make a motion that we go with the 285 uh, decrease, decrease, 22, 10. From the rate of 22. I'll second that. Oh, there's a second by John. Okay. Okay. Any discussion on that? Well, I think uh, it's a prudent decision. I think it makes a wise choice. That's why I was guessing you guys were going to be like that. You're trying to tell us you don't need us? <laughs> no, that's not what I said. You're putting words on now. Okay. Any more discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? Those against? Motion carries. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go uh, before you leave. I'm gonna go print out the tax uh, 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 Article seven is to consider the sale of tax acquired properties. Right, so you have three properties uh, that I put before you. Um, one is the uh, what is the Birch Birch lunch stand? Mm -hmm. That one's tax acquired. Um, this is basically um, 
you know, if you guys decide you want to move forward, I'll be sending this letter out it's dated for tomorrow. It basically says you have 30 days to work with us to redeem your property, pay your, pay your taxes, and we'll release the property back to you uh, back to a clean deed. And if they don't, uh, then, you know, you just really move forward, um, put it out the gate. So I guess, uh, food for thought, as you're thinking about what structuring your motion or your language or not, is number one, are you okay to go ahead and start doing this? And number two, uh, if you put it out the bid, you want to make that part of the same motion so I don't have to come back to the board and say, all right, so we didn't redeem, now we're going out the bid, what's, what's the bid going to be? What's the minimum bid going to be? Typically, we want to recoup our, you know, the fees and taxes. That's the goal. Um, and if there's you know excess revenue from that, then that's whatever. That's that's good. So you want several motions on each one? I would say yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll make a motion. Go ahead and proceed with offering the uh, property back for last four lot two from L to the owner, and if not, going up to bid. Yeah. And the bid would be uh, for what is owed. For what is owed? Yeah. On taxes and sewer. Is there a second round No. Second round, I know. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? Against? Motion carries. Next property. So this property is 296 Main Street, and that tax map 4 by 18. Tax, tax and sewer acquired. Um, same situation. There's a balance on those accounts of. Uh, Total balance for taxes and sewer as of November 17 would be $11,614.88. Uh, that would be the minimum bid if you would uh, decide to move forward with that. You have a motion there? Yeah, I'll make a motion. Like Jason? Exact same as the previous motion, except for that four lotties. The minimum bid of the $10,000? $11,614.88. I'll second that. Second. Any more discussion? Here we go. All those in favor of the motion? Move against. Motion carries. Uh, I will say that that interest is accruing daily on that. That's the that's the balance as of that date. Yes. I, I don't know if we'd be too concerned about the interest that accrues. Yeah. 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 I mean, if it's going out, it's going out to bid, and that's the minimum on the insurance. Yeah. Right. Accrues some for some. Yeah. This next one is for uh, 267 French Street, tax map. Lot 215. We had done this uh, a year ago. You can see the previous correspondence. I did not receive uh, any um, reply. Uh, this is a homeowner in this instance, and so you know I'm always reluctant to you know start that process. Uh, but there was no reply. Uh, and there have not been any attempts to make any payments on tax or sewers on this account. Nor any discussion, nothing. Nothing. They did, they did last year send a return receipt for certified mail. So I know they picked it up. Yeah. There was no response. I'm just looking to, uh, we never followed through on putting out the kit. I think I'd like to just have you guys reaffirm that at, at this point. Um, and we would do that. And I think what we would do is uh, we would probably put these three properties out in one ad. Let's list it separately, bid separately. Yeah. So is there a motion? Yep, I'll make the motion. Uh, same as before, map six, lot two fifteen, the minimum bid of six thousand ninety two dollars. Second of the motion? Second. Chris. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? Against. Motion carries. Article 8, to consider bids received for surplus equipment on the Parks and Recreation Department. You have the bids, Gary? I have the bids. I have the bids. Yep. How many bids were received? Two. Two. One we received the first one that I opened on October 14. Uh, lot 2 used 2003 John Deere 60 inch snow blower. The bid is for $550. Uh, no, $550. Just a snowblower? Yeah. And that one was by uh, 
Conrad Boulder. Second bid is Conrad Boulder on one use John Deere 2003 Power Brew. Bid is $60. It's equipment specific. <laughs> yeah, it's it's for that front mount yeah. lawnmower thing here. So I don't know why they steal it and pick it up. <laughs> I'll make a motion accepted. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? If against, motion carries. Thank you, Sam. Welcome. Article 9 concerns the adoption of. OSHA COVID compliant vaccine, vaccine or test workplace and board policy to hire employees. All right, so um, in some of the latest information that I sent you was that notice that OSHA has put a stay on their menu. Mainly, um, which is essentially for employers of over 100 employees, we fall into that category because it includes all part time, full time. It's not full time, full length. Each employee, whether full or part time, counts as one. And that includes volunteer, appointed, elected, fireman. That puts us somewhere around 140, 137 employees um, that were in place as of November 5, the date of that, when this was supposed to go into effect. So there was the, uh, the lawsuit in Texas that put a stay uh, on the rule. Um, you know, I, was, I took part in a webinar. They said, you know, to go ahead and continue to plan to put it in place. Uh, that it was their intention that they were going to um, be able to have that in force. OSHA's position was um, the county. Uh, that was on the webinar that I attended. The HR director from the county attended a webinar put on by Pierce Atwood, um, giving their legal perspective. It was a PowerPoint presentation. The county of Aroostook reached out to the municipalities that over 100. And we want to have a Zoom and talk about what we can share with you and learn. Uh, and with that, we was able to get through this policy, which is a template from OSHA, you know, made for Madawaska. So we want to talk about what was necessary for us. Uh, I think that the thought process was that. We were going to get these on the, this policy in the books. It has to be on the books by December 4 or 6. And the policy has to be in effect by January 4. And for instance, if you had an employee who was not yet vaccinated but wanted to get vaccinated, not do the testing, the weekly testing, uh, that there was specific dates. You had to be vaccinated first and then second depending on which vaccine, if you did the J&J, you were, you know, after 14 days, you're vaccinated. But in order to be vaccinated by, considered fully vaccinated by January 4th. Uh, so long story short, um, OSHA has kind of stepped down and said, we're not going to put this in place until the appeal goes away or they prevail or whatever they do decide to put it in place. So my thought before that was happening was that we would have implemented this on a voluntary basis, and the day that the OSHA rule goes into effect is the day that it goes into effect. And we would obviously have to change the dates. It would, it would push them back, right, those deadline dates. Um, the decision is basically OSHA provides the employer the opportunity to choose whether they want to mandate vaccine or do vax or test option with the employee's choice. Uh, the employers that I've talked to in the county, the municipal employers that I was in on the Zoom were Caribou Prescal Holton, uh, Caribou Prescal Holton in the county of Worcester in Fort Kent. And none of them were looking to do mandated vaccine. It was going to be vax or test, weekly test. Uh, the HR department would have to do a quite a bit of work. Uh, we have to provide educational materials and there's a lot of stuff that we need to put in place. Some of the OSHA stuff you wouldn't typically see. Yeah. 
um, through the workplace uh, and then create a roster uh, of our employees and their status. The vaccinated, fully vaccinated, partially vaccinated, testing weekly, and have a roster that's readily available for OSHA on inspection, and have a roster that doesn't have beans that's available for the employees. They have a right to see and in their workplace are there people that are vaccinated or not vaccinated. We can't give them beans, and we can give them numbers, I guess. Um, so we can do two things. I think we can wait and see what OSHA does. And Wednesday, if it does come up, um, then we take it up in our next meeting. It gives you guys a little bit more time to process this, or you could set a, a voluntary policy in place, and we could start we can start to work towards that goal. If it does happen, we would be more ready uh, when it does happen uh, that some employees would want to provide their vaccine status. We can start putting that information on file. Uh, employees wanted to, I can't imagine you would want to start vaccinating, uh, doing weekly testing yet. Um, but it would be on a voluntary basis, contingent on it becoming effective for your choice. I think with, with the uh, lawsuits lingering and that stuff, I, I don't think we, we want to we put a policy 100% in place, but I do like the idea of preparing ahead of time. Mm -hmm. We can put, put a plan together to, to start collecting the vaccination and start, you know, do the voluntary stuff like you say. My question is, um, the, the testing, is that's so that the person, the employee's dying, not the town, right. right? So those are some of the things that I, other things that I want to talk to you about as part right. of this. So, OSHA doesn't say that the employer has to pay this for the weekly testing. Uh, they leave it up to the employer if they want to do that or not. And so they have said that the incentive or the disincentive becomes greater if they're the ones that have to pay it, not the employer. So it's a sort of a way to kind of move people towards vaccination, I guess. Um, I agree with that. Yeah. So the mandate also requires that the unvaccinated employees wear masks at work. Now, we've sort of gone back to masking. We've asked our employees because of the outbreaks that we've had in some of our departments, you know, the disruption that it causes, uh, let's mask up. And everybody seems to be pretty much, uh, you know, working, you know, cooperatively on that. Uh, but if the OSHA maxi, uh, if the OSHA rule goes into play, into place, to effect, it only requires the unvaccinated to be masked. Right. And so, you know, masks by everybody else becomes either we say as an employee, employer, you're going to wear your masks, or we're just going to follow the rule. It puts it on the employees to uh, make a decision. So, yeah. I mean, my, my honest opinion with that is if, if you do vaccinated have to wear masks, uh, don't wear masks, and unvaccinated have to wear them. You're going to get the dishonest. You can't pick and choose. You can't ask, are you, you know, right. are you vaccinated part of the mask or mask? I would, I would say just across the board, you know, mask, get the mask policy. And do, you know, if you're alone in your office, you don't have to wear it. If you're alone in your cubicle, you don't have to wear it. But if you're, you know, within three or six feet of somebody, then, you know. OSHA's guidance is that if you're in the workplace, you have to mask. If you're in a workplace where you're surrounded by walls and a door, right. you're alone, you can, you can unmask. Right. Yep. Yeah. If you're outside working, you don't need to mask. Right. Yeah. yeah. Are you facing any issues with that? But from some of the personnel who are, no, nobody's really uh, pushing back and saying. Uh, no, as far as masking. Yeah. No, I haven't heard anything. I mean, it, you know, we had an outbreak at public works, and, and it was disruptive. You know, it makes people think a little bit. You know, and everybody else who's left working is picking up the workload, mm -hmm. wow. and then. You know, it, it causes quite a bit of stress, and that's why we do that. We ask the employees to start masking because um, it doesn't take much of an outbreak in the town last night to, to really throw a wrench in Yeah, and they're out for 10 days, so it's uh, yeah. that's a big, uh, yeah, big concern. I, I do want to discuss a little bit with you. I mean, it's not necessarily the OSHA guidance, if you will, or the, the mandate, or whatever you want to call it. It's how we, we've been handling. Uh, employees who have been coming into getting COVID or coming into contact. And so based on what I've been hearing other communities are 
doing. Uh, we have been basically saying to the employees, if we know that you've been contracting COVID at work, or you've had a close contact at work, we're going to send you home. We have to. We're going to pay you. We're not going to charge your EVT time. Okay? We're asking you to stay home. But if you get it outside of the workplace, you're using your EBT time. That can be hard to prove. Okay? Uh, and so, and, and I'll just give you some, what we had to deal with a little bit. Um, we had a situation where we thought the first one was the first one. And we, we caught it at work. But then the next one got it. And it is possible that the next one had it before the first one. So we had to initially told the first one, you're using your own EBT, but then that then it caused us to rethink whether or not the first one was in fact the first one and you did in fact hit picture in the workplace. Yeah. So where I'm going with this is that it's extremely difficult to make that judgment with with hundred percent certainty. Okay. Uh, I've asked the other towns that were in that meeting. The exception of Kiribati, anybody that gets COVID or has contact <coughs> sent home pain without charging the employee EBT because it's just hard to make that determination. Where that becomes difficult is where you have an unvaccinated employees, okay, that make a contact. The CDC guidance says you're going home for 10 days. Where you're vaccinated, you, you can continue your work, and if you show symptoms, you go get your test. Right. So the unvaccinated go home for 10 days, paid. And yeah. you know, and it's a matter of opinion, fair one side or the other. Okay, I'm going to put it out there that way. But it causes a lot of, you know, not hardship, but it makes people think about what we call the fairness, you know, the fairness uh, factor. You know, is it fair? Uh, the employees that have to stay behind and work right. and, and the unvaccinated go home for yeah. 10 days pay. That's tough. And I, and I would recommend that we follow the CDC guidance with, let's say, the vaccinated that get to work. Well, if you're unvaccinated and you have to go home because you're unvaccinated, you should not get paid for that. Just my, my thought. You know what I mean? To be fair, because it's not fair that I have to stay. You know, I'm vaccinated. I got to stay at work, but my daughter's not vaccinated, and she she gets to go home and and enjoy. You know what I mean? Enjoy the permissions. Uh, and I'm not saying I'm vaccinated. I'm using that as an example. I am vaccinated. <laughs> but I'm just using that as an example. Yeah, I, that I think to be fair with everybody, you follow the CDC guidelines of if you're vaccinated and you have to stay, or you're vaccinated, you go home for five days. Then the unvaccinated will get paid for five days or whatever. Whatever. Well, the, the, the CDC guidelines it says that doesn't talk about. Yeah, I'm just using that as an example. I understand. Yeah. I understand but. That, that's sort of our thing. So, to go on the OSHA thing a little bit, we go backwards. Yeah. OSHA says that if the rule goes into effect, number one, we have to provide four hours of time paid for the employee to go get vaccinated. Yeah. But okay. it doesn't say that. It just says that they have to have the time paid off. It's used if their own time right. and they've accrued. It's not that we're paying them separately. They don't use their, that's a decision that we would have to make. Okay. It also says that if, you know, if somebody gets a side effect, they can get two days. Yeah. Okay. And it also says that we have to guarantee their job. Okay. So, but it doesn't talk about who's paying, who's actually paying for that time off. What it's saying is that if the employee, the OSHA rule says, if somebody doesn't have that approved time, the time off, that paid vacation, or like sick time, whatever you want to call it, that we have to give it to them whether or not they have it, and they can't go into the negative right. because of it. Right. So, yeah. No, I mean, if somebody's making an effort, and uh, in my opinion, if somebody's making an effort to, to, to get vaccinated or has made the effort to get vaccinated, then we should support them and, and, and pay time off in that. But uh, if, if they're unvaccinated, then We'll pay whatever we would have paid for a vaccinated person the same amount of time off, but any additional time they need to take, according to the regulations, should be on their own time. And what I mean by that is, I know this is not what the regulation says, but let's just say the regulation says a vaccinated person who gets in contact has to go home for two days, 
an unvaccinated, I know, I know, I'm just using this as an example, okay? And an unvaccinated person has to go home for 10 days. Well, that unvaccinated person should get paid for two days like a vaccinated person would, and the additional time is done. That's the common sense. That's the common sense. That's what I'm saying we should do. I don't so know if we can really apply that. Whatever, <laughs> kind of whatever the mandate comes there out. There is too much gray, too much left for interpretation, too much opinion, in my opinion, to make any action on any type of policy without further guidance my personal opinion. I don't, whether you vaccinate, unvaccinated, you may not be vaccinated because you can't be vaccinated. So there's a lot of things out there that play in. Well, there's the medical exclusions. There are right, there are some medical are exclusions, exclusions and things like that that maybe, maybe factor into some of the, right. I'm not vaccinated, but you're not only going to get, you know. Right. So all that will play itself out when, when they make their decision. As far as the adoption of it, I think there's a, a good ground here. And I would rather stay and let, let's see what the clarification is when it comes out. Um, I would just be afraid that if, if right now somebody voluntarily would do it, they're probably already going to do it. You know, if you were to say, we'd like to get a, a roster of who's been vaccinated, you can ask people to provide information on their vaccination. Whether they provide it or not, it's totally up to them. But you can certainly ask. Well, I think that you know, I, I just think I would stay away from trying to. I would. There may be people of a stronger opinion on the other side. Just saying, we're gonna put it in place in a voluntary basis. People volunteer, and then all of a sudden it gets washed out. And I don't know. I, I wouldn't want to collect the employees' medical information without policy in place. Right. So what, what I'm saying is that if. I don't know if I feel comfortable asking for an employee's vaccination status or put a memo out there that says, hey, any of you that want to provide on a voluntary basis your vaccination status, contact HR. Right. We'll keep that on file. I don't have a, I don't have a policy in place that deals with medical privacy. Correct. And this, That's why I don't think we should. This does. If we, are, if we adopted it on a voluntary basis, it would give us that policy. But I also agree with you that a lot of the provisions of the policy don't go into effect until it federally goes into until, effect. Until such a date, and, and it might not at all. It might not. It, it, it may be completely discomfort. And this is a six month, this is six months. This is only a six month thing, unless OSHA yeah. would extend it temporarily. Yeah. 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 Like I said earlier, I don't want to put a plan in place now. But I'm just saying, like right now, as far as the, the, the pay time off and that, what are we doing today? What's the policy today for that? For me, it would be helpful because you know there's a lot of there's debate there. What what, what are we doing with? Again, I'll, I'll go ahead and say that with the exception of Kiribu, all the other large employers, municipal employers, pay it. No questions asked because they feel that it's too much burden on staff to be able to take on that responsibility. Well, make a determination where you got it, and the only time where you can be 100% sure. Is within, is, is ironically in the unvaccinated where they make the contact. And by CDC's policy, you've got to go home for 10 days. You know, but everywhere else, if we have to sit there and make a determination, you got it at work or you didn't get it at work. No, that part I understand, but I'm talking about, like you just said, that one of the other towns is that people have to go home for 10 days. Are they paying regardless they're of vaccination? They're, they're paying. As far as I know, most places are paying. Except here. Oh, you're saying. Well, it's the place I had in the last half hour. That oh, that's right. Yeah. I was there. Yeah. And a lot of them had concerns also about what happens if you're sent home to be quarantined. You're not really quarantined. Mm -hmm. You know. And well, nobody had an answer in that. Yeah. But yeah. It, it, it came up. You know, like, a lot of gray areas. Well, yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the, you know they've seen. And who's going to report you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, that's and that's where it gets dicey. I know. That you get employees that are. Supposed to stay home in quarantine, but they don't, well, that's and, and that's where it becomes. Like, and okay, we're paying them to. That's the thing. We're paying them to stay home, and they're going out. Yeah, I know. Else. You know that that's is, why I, I think that, that I, came up, but there was no answer that was given. That's why I think we should be paying people to stay home because they made the choice to be unvaccinated. That's that's apart from this policy. That's why I'm, I'm looking. And that was you're saying that was follow what Karen was doing. They don't pay for. I, 
think I think that they're not paying for they're, they're charging the employees sick time for yeah. not recording time off. Okay. Right. Generally speaking, not vaccinated or not. Okay. It's just COVID well, contact, whatever you use your yeah. you use your earned time, your benefit time, your sick time, whatever it is you yeah. can get, whatever they have in place. Um, but the other towns pay it. The majority was paying. Yeah. What decisions are making? I mean, I come out with a policy or I, I, the policy I, or I think not, but I think we should address the uh, the, the pay time off, and I would make a motion. I'd be ready to make a motion on just that the pay time off, not the policy. I think that that would alleviate or help you because I know that this is right. an issue for you at this point. That you know it, it gives you some kind of guidance and. and well, these are employment practices, and it almost needs to be a policy, and yeah. that's something I prefer to have discretion over. There's a lot of wild there, and there's, yeah, there's a lot of. Yeah. I, I'll, can we make a motion on that? I'll make there's a motion, a motion right now. Oh, a second. Yeah. So I'm prepared to make a motion that, according to the paid sick time off, that we would follow the the, the same policy that Caribou is following now. And that's moving starting today. That would be starting on today. Yeah. Moving forward. Moving forward, yeah, yeah, yeah. I will move right track. Okay, starting forward, that that you have the employee take their their time and not just taking time. There's no there's no second. Did you ask for a second? No, I'm just the motion is. I up. Is there a second to that motion? Yes, I will second the motion. No second the motion. Okay. okay. Discussion. How are you going to ask somebody if they're vaccinated or not? We're not. Not anybody so by, in Caribou, if you're unvaccinated, you're not paid. Is that correct? No, that's not. No, 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 We, 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 we can, I see what you're saying. How do we know? I, we know because some of the employees have told us they're not. We don't, we don't plan to be. So it's verbal confirmation. Some employees, you know, we all work in our workplace, and you know, I, I told her that I'm vaccinated. She tells we all know when we went to get vaccinated. Some of the employees have. That we're, we're not vaccinated and we don't want to get vaccinated. So it's not, there's not a good documentation there. I see where you're, I see where you're going. This motion was regardless of vaccination. This was because, like, when I, had, I asked that question and you said, regardless of vaccination or not, they're, they're taking their, their sick leave if they have to go home. That's what, what, what So, what I'm saying is, what, what are we doing in respect to vaccine, like sending people home? Right. That's what I answered. Regardless of vaccination status, you're you're saying they're going to use their own time if, if they go home. Yes, they use their own time because according to what we just talked about earlier, the CDC doesn't recommend sending somebody who hasn't been vaccinated home. They will they continue to stay at work, so they're not going to be going home. Well, if they test positive, they have to go home. Correct. And then they, they right. And then they, have, they yeah. have to use their own time. Right. And and again, we ask the employees if they're vaccinated or not. And that's it, that's how we well, the paper. Yeah. You know, we don't carry the records. So we don't have a policy to ask them. <laughs> well, we're not asking vaccination. Fun. Well, it's saying this has nothing to do with asking asking for vaccination. If you have COVID or you, and you have to go home, period, regardless of vaccination. You are going to use your own personal time. So, you, so you're treating right. this like any other illness. Yeah. This is any other illness. Home, you're taking your own personal well, time. This so, is for COVID. I didn't say any other illness. Well, no, but basically home. we're handling it the same way. Well, yeah, yeah. You're sick enough that you can't be at work. You're going home. So you're sick time. They're sent home. No. For, yeah. A poor person runs out of sick time. That's it. That's so it. why don't That's we it. offer employees who need to go home due to COVID have the option to use their personal time or unpaid? If you have personal time. You can use your personal time. Yeah, I, I would not have any. If you don't have personal time, does it fall in the same bucket of the? I don't know. Personal well, time versus time is neither one bucket. Well, it's all the same. But yeah. what he's yeah. saying is that it, it, the difference is that it would be if you don't have any more left, you're just going home and pay. Right. Yeah. Which, which is all. Yeah. What, oh, yeah. what I'm saying is, if you tell them they must take it, what if I have a wedding in April and I have a vacation book? And I need that time for that. Oh, the last yeah, time I, I have. Yeah, yeah. And then if I get sick between now and then, I go home and I have to use my earned time at that point. Now I don't have any time to take for the wedding that I booked. Right. So to me, I think they should have the option to take it unpaid if they want, 
not force them to use their, their yeah. personal time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, That's so all then I'm saying. I'd, I'd amend my motion then to include or time off. Yes, to agree to, to rescind in the yeah. second. That's, that's to rescind the second. Right. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. rescind your second. So, so, so to be clear, so <laughs> noted. A significant departure from where we were. Yeah, I know. Right. So uh, I'll make it clear again. So you rescind your second. I'll make my motion clear again. So if an employee is sent home for COVID, for being infected with COVID, positive for COVID, or infected with COVID, or under the understanding that they might have COVID. Any reason that they're sent home due to any COVID related illness, they can choose to either take their personal time or unpaid time off. So that's somebody waiting for a test, somebody who's positive, somebody who, if the CDC recommends them to go home, they can choose whether it's unpaid or personal time. I'll second that. Okay. <clears throat> what do you guys do with the no? Everybody gets paid. Everybody's paid right now. You for the testing. Well, the other thing is they don't want to lose any employees. Right? They want to. Mm -hmm. they if wanna, someone says, "Hey, I got lose time. I'm looking for another job." That's the danger with it. If they have our time, they can choose to take it, or they can take it after. Yeah. In fact, we have. That's the motion. We have. Uh, now, I mean, six days and we don't have to take. But that's a company policy. And there's a policy on it, too. <laughs> Is there an expiration to this motion, to this policy? <laughs> I, I, would, I would have it reviewed at the time that we create any other policy regarding this. Uh, that makes part of that sense. Review what on these changes. Right. I would say cancel at the time. You say you could review it. Well, if the guidance, different guidance comes out, it have to be reviewed. All right. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Is that in the motion? Yeah. You agree to that? Yep. Okay. <laughs> okay. Wait Any more discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor of the motion? No, but there will be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I just, I, something that just came up and that you guys were discussing that um, topic, do you, do you think that that might make, force people to maybe be untruthful about their COVID positive result Possibly. if they have to, which may lead to an outbreak later on in the future? Sure. I'm just saying that that's something that popped into my head. Yeah. And it could work the other way too. Somebody could be untruthful about them. Yeah. I think I'm infected with COVID, I'm going home. For well, certainly if the unvaccinated were sent home paid, that could be a reason to say, well, I was in contact with yeah, sure. you know, a free vacation type thing. But the, yeah, that was just a, I thought that I had. So. Okay. All right, so we're going to treat it as anything, anything that's filed as of tomorrow, right? Moving forward. Okay. So we're just still working. Probably going to create more issues than, than you had before. Yeah, you might have to revisit next week. Next week. <laughs> <laughs> I might call the meeting so that it <laughs> Okay, moving to Article 10. Yeah, yeah. We'll call it a work in progress. Yeah. Okay. Discussion regarding vandalism on town park facilities. So I uh, got an email. You know, for, you know, we saw it on Facebook. Uh, not on Facebook, but others saw it and people would respond to that. And, we know I reached out to the guys and to say that you know we need to have a discussion about vandalism, and I agree. Uh, vandalism. We have been experiencing vandalism in our parks um, intermittently since I've been here, uh, and I'm sure it was going on before that. And everything from painted graffiti and uh, playground equipment several years ago to breaking things, kicking things, whatever. Sam can talk about more specifically what those are, but we fear the boat landing. Um, those are the two, basically, that we're having trouble with? Primarily. Yeah, I'd say so, yeah. yeah. At least this summer, anyway. One of them is the location. Private, it's hard to, to see. And the other one is what? Lighting? I think regardless of lighting. I mean, yeah. In those locations, I've even seen some on the Fox Street Park as well. Some graffiti there. 
purchased a brand new picnic table and the next day there's engravings all over it. You know? yeah. And that's right out in the middle of Mont Street on the light. It's one of those things that's hard to snap your fingers and get rid of overnight. You know? yeah. So, so I, I shared my, in my email to you guys about it that kind of dealt with that in Senegal a little bit and we're going to open it for me. The, the, the level of camera quality, video quality, for law enforcement purposes, for, to have a video that is usable in prosecution has to be very high. If, if, there's, if you can't, you know, cameras are up there, you got to zoom them in. When you do that, it becomes distorted. Pixel, you need high-end cameras. You need cameras that can read well at night. You have issues with lighting. The light, street light is here. You can't put the camera there because it causes halos around the, the images, you know, the people and stuff. And you can't see license plate numbers. When you, so that it, you really need a high-end system, from what I was told back over there. And um, to have something that was actually useful, from a law enforcement perspective, right? So you can have a camera that says, I know that it's you, but I can't, I'm not 100% sure. It can be at, it can, it can be a deterrent, though. Yeah. Having it up there might be a deterrent or not. Mm -hmm. um, but it might not. And what I can tell you is that law enforcement, I, I learned over there in Senegal, they were very frustrated with the judicial system right now because if they don't have the person caught red handed, they're sending them home. And that is exacerbated today by COVID because the prisons aren't taking any yep. anymore well, during these outbreaks. So you could put in some surveillance. It's going to require Wi Fi, pushing the signal, high end equipment, uh, maintenance, maybe an ongoing expense there, I, mean, I would imagine, investment. Would, will it help? I, I would think they would have some measurable effect. Is it going to be foolproof? I don't know. Uh, but it's going to cost some money. And, you know, and then on the other side of it is the cost on the record department of having to go behind and clean up all of this stuff because, you know, most often they're the, they don't find out yeah. first. They find out through Facebook and you get a, a, a community that's in outreach and it needs to be fixed now. And so they got to drop everything they're doing to go fix it. And it places a, a pretty good demand on them. I don't want to take all of what you want to say, but you can speak to, you know, to it if you want to chime in. Oh, with what you got. So, you know, well, no, it's just that I've, I've only been on as a director for a couple of years now, but this it was a pretty bad summer as far as vandalism goes. Uh, beginning of the summer, I mean, that bathroom at the Bicentennial Park was vandalized repeatedly. Uh, door was kicked in in the men's bathroom, and you had uh, soap dispensers torn off the wall and in the toilet with uh, disgusting. I mean, you know, pooping on top of that and flushing the toilet and graffiti on the wall. And so my guys had to, you know, repeatedly go and clean that up. Uh, not only is it gross and time consuming, but also places a financial burden, you know, relatively small, but still, it, you know, repeatedly over the course of the summer, it's Okay. You know, several hundred dollars for sure worth of wood and soap dispensers and that type of stuff. So, uh, you know, I just certainly need the conversation to be had, I guess, in, in terms of what to do about it, if there's anything we can do about it. Uh, I know, you know, cameras, uh, Gary alluded to it, camera systems can be expensive, but uh, maybe a camera that isn't necessarily recording or uh, just something to create the facility you know, the facade of, hey, there is a camera watching me, even though the kids may, might not know that it's recording or not. Uh, that might deter them, but, you know, we talked about it earlier today, and it might only last for a little little while. Um, and maybe these things ebb, ebb and flow as well. Uh, you know, this summer was particularly bad, maybe because it's COVID, maybe the kids don't have much to do. I'm not sure what the culprit is, but maybe next summer would be better. You know, I, I'm not sure, but... I just know that if it continues every summer like this, and it's hard for us to make progress in the parks, uh, you know, like putting your picnic tables in, uh, fixing things that need to be fixed to try to beautify these parks, and uh, it kind of feels like we're taking steps backwards. Uh, if especially like there was one that just happened a couple weeks ago, and right before winter, you know, it's, so it's 
uh, you know, can't really do much to me to it right now, but um, yeah, so it just it's a little frustrating on, on the part of the Parks and Rec Department as far as that goes. So just want to see if there's anything that can be done. I think that aside from prosecutable evidence in the video to bring to court, PD, and if there were camera systems, then PD would have access to them and they could, I'm sure they could monitor that. And if there's activity going on at 1 a.m. in the parks, you know, by being able to just see the video, if they happen to look at it at the right time, they could go there and. and what's, the, what's the likelihood that occurs that well, something happens to be looking at the camera when it, when it goes down? You know, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Vandalism is always going to be a problem, right? And, you know, we can't put a camera on a bathroom, right? So, yeah. what do you do? You know, do you plead with the community and say, hey, if uh, we're going to start having the PD enforce? You know the strictest prosecution we can on anybody that's found, and you know, do we put a reward out there? No, I think versus you know, buying cameras, do you put a reward? So we're so lower. Uh, turn in sound video say. or pictures of the person doing the vandalizing, and here's extra reward. Um, you know, and beg the, you know, we're going to have to ask the community. This is our community. Well, so it's a community you know, police. This, this is a community policing effort. Our PD is not going to be able to handle this. This is not something you put on the back of the PD. There's no way they're going to be able to manage this. It's awful that you even have to discuss it, but at the end of the day, you know, our community members are the ones that are doing it, more than likely, right? Or they're with somebody from this community that's doing it, or they're friends from another community here, I don't know. But I would suspect that, you know, a higher level of awareness, you know, maybe a, an, a, a, an ad in the paper, um, you know, something on our app, um, talk with the PD, you know, maybe uh, offer a reward for turning in those people that are doing those sorts of things versus trying to invest thousands of dollars in a camera system that you hope somebody's there and then if, even if you do get it, hopefully it's clear enough or you steal the camera. You know, I, <laughs> it's a deterrent just like it would be a camera, you know what I mean? It's, it's, I just think we have I don't know how we're going to stop it. I mean, it's, happened, it's not just here. No, we have We have we have set up a like game cam. So the police yeah. department does and the rec. We do have a game cam as well. And for uh, like the pocket park next to Daigle's furniture, there was uh, a dog that was pooping on the you know in the park, and so it was a it was a problem. We kept having to you know go, go clean it up. So uh, a recurring offense like that. I mean, I guess uh, game cam it does work. You know, if like vandalism in the park, if it's repeated. The uh, thing is, it's kind of sporadic, so it's kind of hard to say, well, it happens one day, you put the game can, nothing happens, right. and then we're asking either a maintenance guys or the police department to kind of uh, filter through hundreds and hundreds of it's pictures, true. you know, uh, so that could be difficult as well, but it did help in that case, so that's one thing that if there's like a repeated thing that, okay, this is happening every week, yeah. uh, that's something we can certainly do, uh, so yeah. I think that could be a... a short-term fix, you know, that they're going to see a camera there, they'll realize well, where they, they are. They won't, they won't see the game cam, though. Kind of so it. you're going to put it in the position that they're not going to see it because right, you, you don't want it to be bad ones. Right. Yeah, they could just take the game cam with that. So put it, <laughs> put, it, put it in the location that they can't reach it. Yeah. You know, I'd like them to see it if we're going to even attempt this, then they'll lose their camera there. I, I, I think we should do a, maybe a, a rotation. I know there's going to do some work on the rec department, but do a rotation schedule for a short period of time between the parks where one day you put the camera somewhere it's perfectly visible, the next day put it in a different park, get in, the next day at another park totally visible, and, and let people know. Advertise it on the app and advertise it. Hey, we're watching our parks. We've got you know, cameras in the park. And then not to check it, but like if we see, if we notice vandalism, they well, go back and, right, you know, yeah. if it just so happens that we get lucky that it's at that park. Right, yeah, you would have to check it every day. Right. Like if, you know, when you see that there's vandalism, go check that area. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, like Chris said, try to get the police department to monitor there. Oh, We're going to be at one park and the kids are going to go to the other. They can yeah. see the cops coming to monitor <coughs> I wouldn't want to put that burden on them. Uh, the other thing, too, we could do is uh, let some of these uh, festivities and festivals know that, because a lot of this, Vandalism happens right there in the middle of the day during music in the park or during a festival or during these activities. Um, you know, I've been there plenty of times during music in the park. I get tell kids stop, you know, stop 
carrying a varsity at the table or get off the swing, you know, they're on the, the small kitty swing uh, two at a time uh, breaking it, you know. To ha ask these festivities to say, hey, you know, have somebody walk around and just check what's going on in the park. Because a lot of damage is done right there in mid daylight when the parks are full. You know, I've, I've seen it firsthand. So I think if we take a mixed approach like that, we can call the community and just get the word out there. Yeah, yeah, also play on the community as well. I know a lot of, like, um, there's a lot of dog walkers that go through the park, especially by Centennial Park, right? That's so where a lot of those reports are coming from. They, yeah. That that one a couple weeks ago was, yeah, exactly. So, you know, hey, you've got to, you know, lean on the community a little bit to say, hey, you know, if you see something that's not supposed to happen, then report it or whatever. But uh, watering flowers this summer, I saw, you know, a bunch of kids, like four or five kids on that metal swing, you know, swinging back and forth, trying to go as fast as they possibly can on it, as high as they can. And, you know, it's like, guys, get, you know, get off the swing, you're going to break it. You know, but for them, it's, I don't know if they have nothing else to do, if they, you know, they think that breaking stuff, they're trying to break stuff is fun, but uh, that's, that was the case, they're having a great time, but they don't realize that there's consequences and people that have to fix it and it costs money to fix these things, and so. And then there's been an internet trend lately, too, of take, take videos of yourself yeah. breaking things. Yeah, you know, they're right, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, it's gotta go. Yeah. What do you do to get them? You were with watch program or something. Yeah, I mean, it's so hard. I know it is hard. You know, and I love nothing more to have the time to go down and drive through the parks at nine o'clock at night just to make sure everything's good. And if I can catch somebody, I'd yeah. I'd love to bring them back home to mom and dad. <laughs> you know? Or maybe mom and dad are even there. I well, know. that's I think that's part of the issue too, maybe sometimes. <laughs> you know, we've we've an issue with anything. You know? yeah. We thought about Sam, any recommendations? Well, I just uh, I rec you know the paid camera, I guess that would be a cheap option to say, hey, there's a camera there, whether it's recording or not. It yeah. might solve something, maybe not, but then, who, you know, who knows? Um, we, we, Gerald and I and Al, have, we've considered at the beginning of the summer when all the vandalism would have, was at its peak to, to lock the bathrooms, you know, at, at certain times and only open it for these occasions like music in the park, but then it's, it's sad to have to even think about that because it's a public park and a public restroom where as long as it's being used responsibly, they should be able to use it at any time. Uh, so, you know, we didn't do anything, we didn't act on that. But um, so, as far as recommendations, I'm not sure besides, uh, besides that, you know, paid camera. And then, you know, I think the game cam thing, putting it in different locations, you know, like it, that, that could be. That could be handled, or you could do that. Yeah, I mean, just every morning, make it a habit, you know, in the morning, hey, you know, just move the camera and then, yep. you know, take a visual quick look at the park to see if anything was vandalized and then also lean on the community too the dog walkers are great because they're those are the ones that are frequent, frequent frequenting the park most you know they're you something, say something. they're there every single day yeah yeah uh and this thing might it go away might have been flow you know hey next year uh, a group of kids uh, found something else to do or you know i don't know but uh it was just particularly bad this summer so i you know it, i'm glad Conversation. I'm glad it's brought to your attention. I'm sure you guys have heard, but uh, we can try these different tactics. And uh, I don't know, maybe uh, Jason. I don't know what do you what do you think. You about that? Game yeah, right now? Just, we do right now. Yeah. How so many do you have? Uh, I believe there's two. There's two. Would, would it benefit having a couple more game cameras? I mean, they're not that expensive. It. Yeah. It, it might actually. Yeah. It's. Um, it might not be a bad idea to to put a couple in in you know in each part or at least one in each. And then if you notice, fans are wanting to swap, swap the card out. Yeah, yeah, that's the. I think, new line. I think the expense is, is yeah, as the the uh, SD SD card fills up, yeah. and you have to purchase new ones. Yeah, but. yeah they're pretty sweet. Yeah, Richard's got a couple of game cameras. I just heard him say. No, I mean we can find out where his are. I know we get some real cheap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have money in your budget to get a couple game cameras and memory cards, or is it something you need to? I, I would think so. Yeah. Um. I, I you know until yeah for sure uh, until it becomes a you know if we have and to. I don't purchase, think you need uh, a policy from us on no, right away. I mean, no, sure. I think you know, I think you would kind of see where it's happening yeah. and trending and yeah you know hopefully we can catch something but you know in the meantime we you can. have more information and you can bring it back to us what your findings are and what you could recommend. Yeah. Right yeah. Yeah. Every time we have a vandalism, we report it to the police. And yeah, they, yeah, they're yeah. Documented. So right. at least if we come back to this, then it's everything's documented. This what happened this summer. So uh, you have something to look back on. They're clever. I mean, 
Yeah, no. The catch the act is going to be really difficult sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah unfortunately. Um, yeah, it's just frustrating on earth anyway. Yeah, I'm more with the term than anything, but I, you know, I think community policing is going to be our best option. I think so. Too. That's awful to say that, but I know what else you do, you know? We can't put a full time officer on the police parks or something, you know? It's the, yeah, it's, it's tough when the vandalism vandalism has already happened. Yeah. You know, uh, it's causing a little bit more uh, stress on our parks and restrooms uh, budget. But because uh, wood, obviously wood this summer was crazy expensive, so uh, we do had to repair some some wood objects there. But um, hasn't been too bad where we're you know not thousands of dollars at this point, but a couple hundreds of dollars for sure has racked up. So. Article 11, Zoom training. This is for executives, elected, and appointed yeah. officials. Anybody interested? Let me know. I'll sign you up. I, I would be interested on December 8th. December 8th. Three to four to six. I can do that one. That's my day off. The rest I can't. They were both my days. <laughs> Anybody else interested? I, I can do the same one. Yeah, give me that one. Let me put that on my phone. I think something on it. Yeah. I think you know this. This is a very, very important training. Uh, I don't know if any of you have ever visited the EOC here in Madawaska. If you haven't, give me a call. I'll take. I'll gladly take you over there. It's a pretty. Very, it's a very good setup. Um, it's something that we don't use often enough in this town. And I think when it has been used, the, the town officials really haven't been involved to the full potential. It would be nice to see us all get the training and all you know, participate in the next event that the EOC has. It's, it's one of those things that the EOC, uh, it's an emergency operations center. And basically, when natural disasters happen, floods, large fires, you know, earthquakes, things like that, uh, this is the central area where everything is, is happening. So our involvement is a lot more of, hey, we need to rent 30 generators, and we need, you know, this is going to hit the, the town budget. It's nice to have officials there to, you know, work through this and discuss this, and especially having Gary there for his knowledge of the town. It's, uh, it's nice to see it in operation. We've done a couple tests of it. We've practiced a lot, and it's, it's a pretty decent facility. So. so let me just say that I'll set you all up for a link. Yep. And if you get a chance to participate, all you need to do is put it in. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You stepped out when we were discussing the vandalism. You asked Sam to maybe look at getting a couple more uh, game guess. cameras to try to do that. In regards, yeah. it's not going to be an easy one. No. Just to bat it down. Yeah. I wonder. I wonder. Also putting the signs in our parks that our parks are under surveillance. Yeah, that's a good idea. Know, I think people ought to know that it would hurt. The people who aren't there to cause harm should know that while you're there, it could be filmed. They're, they're being surveyed. Yeah. Yeah. They should know that. So we'll look to get some signs as well. Yep. Sounds good. Before we adjourn, do we have a date? Gary? Mark. 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 Yeah, Mark. Yeah, I like it. Mark. I already got two meetings in December, so. Two meetings in December? Oh, yeah, I've already set up. We do. <laughs> the 8th and the 13th, I think. No. I'll be right back. Yeah, I'll be right back. You're right. You scared me. You scared me. I did, not you guys. Uh, yeah, I can have a meeting. Do we do right before Christmas there? I was looking at the, the 30th, okay. you need eight. Oh. Of this one? Yeah. Oh, 30th. No sooner. Two weeks. I don't even know that. Yes, I guess. Or Gary. But I don't know what else he has. <laughs> Thursday. Thursday. The 30th is the 34th. No, uh, the upcoming 30th, Tuesday, November. November 30th. November 30th. Okay. It'll be two weeks from now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. We need uh, 
for gaining this point? I would say no. I don't think so, Aunt Carol. Do you have anything pressing this month? I would say probably I'm good till December for sure. The 14th? I will ask you a question. The 14th? 14th will work for me. Yeah. Okay, 